Hey, hey everybody, Mr. Chow here. And today we're gonna to talk about the basics of health insurance. And this is day one out of five days of insurance that we're gonna be talking about. So why insurance? And, and I covered this in my introduction, it's almost never taught in schools. Uh, you could go on your whole life and still never get a course on this. So I'm so excited that you clicked this video and that you're getting educated on insurance. Everyone will need to purchase some type of insurance in their life. So that's why it's really good to get educated on it. And it's an easy way to save money because if you don't know what you're paying for, then most likely you're going to overpay. All right. So this is day one out of five days. And I really hope that you can join us for all five days. Today, we're going to cover the basics of health of health insurance. All right, cool. Now, before we begin, uh, I'm a teacher and I'm pretty passionate and, and experienced um, about health insurance. Like I've known about it for years and I've done my research, but I got to be honest with you. This video took me six hours to research and to prep six hours. And honestly, it's overwhelming because when I think about how much I need to teach you, it just gets over. There's so many scenarios that could play out. So we're going to keep it super, super, super basic. And I got to be honest, I'm really good at, or not really good, but I, I'm really passionate about teaching because I truly believe that as teachers, uh, we, our main task is to take a really complex subject and make it accessible for all. So I truly hope that all this prep is going to be worth it. And, and that after this video, you're going to go ahead and take away just a better understanding of health insurance. All right. So if you appreciate this content um, at the end of this video, think about um, give me a thumbs up, give me a like, and consider to, uh, and, and so, uh, consider subscribing because there's so much more to learn and this is only the beginning. All right, thank you so much. All right, here we go. So one more thing I just wanna say, I understand that when you take notes, when you write things down, your retention will be better and better. So um, I created a free note taker. So please check the link in the description below for an email list. If you get on the email list, I'll go ahead and email you a note taker. Um, and if you do all five days, I'm going to go ahead and give you a free certificate of completion that you can use on any single professional resume that you have, letting people know that you've completed this course on insurance. And that's huge. Who can say that these days? All right, so go for it. Um, once again, day one out of five, basics of, of health insurance. So, you know, I want to start off really broad here. And I thought about how to approach this. And first, I want to start here. Most people ask, hey, how much do you get paid? And they name a number, right? Oh, $30,000 annually or $50,000 annually or $100,000 annually. But really, what are they talking about when they have that number? They're talking about your pay, your wage, your salary. But as I've grown up, I've realized that isn't all what compensation is. There's many different types of compensation. So when you go look for a job, really make sure you look at not just the number, but all these different types of compensation. The first one is your base pay. And that's kind of like what we talked about uh, a little bit earlier, like your salary, that number. But there's also commissions. Some jobs have commissions. Some jobs have overtime. And, you know, as a salaried worker, sometimes you don't get that overtime. So some, um, some jobs have it built in and that you can get additional pay for overtime. There's pay bonuses. There's profit sharing, depending on which company you're a part of. There's uh, merit pay based on how long you've been with a company, et cetera. There's stock options. There's travel, meal, and housing allowance. So all these are types of compensation. But the one that I look at a lot as well is your benefits. So there's a lot of different benefits. So what are benefits, Mr. Chow? Well, benefits include 401k matching. So that's for retirement or some jobs still have a pension. If you're a government state employee, that's huge or a private company, some still have it, but most just have the 401k matching these days. This is the one that I like to look at as well. Definitely take into consideration before accepting a job offer, which is your health insurance, your dental and your medical. And then there's also going to be your life insurance and vacation, leaves, taxes, et cetera. So it goes on and on. It's a compensation package. And that's what you should look at, not just the salary or the number that you get paid because all this factors in and all this adds up. So remember, not all jobs are created equal. There's pros and cons to every single job out there. There's no perfect job out there. Now, if you work for yourself, if you're self-employed, if you are if you own a business of any sort, an online business or an in-person business, um, it, if you're a contractor or if you're self-employed or if you're a YouTube star, right? At the end of the day, if you work for yourself, it's going to be so different. And, I'm, and, and let me quickly explain why, because you're going to have to pay for your own benefits. 
a lot of those like retirement matchings or uh, health benefits or all of those health insurances, right? You're going to have to pay for that yourself. So yeah, you may make more money on your own through your business, but just letting you know, you're going to have to pay these costs yourself. So there's three types of insurance plans. And if you're taking notes, this is what I would want you to write down. So I'm going to simplify it. I'm sure there's other types of insurance plans out there, but I'm going to get super basic so that you stay with me and you understand. Number one, there's something called group help health insurance, group health insurance. And this is employer based. If you work with someone, if you work for someone, then you get access to most likely a group health insurance. Now your employer is going to choose the plan so that you don't have to think about that. They're going to obviously give you a discount. Why? Because your employer, so as an employer, you have to pay a part or you don't have to, but most do. A, uh, you have to pay a part of your employee's health insurance. So they're going to subsidize something, what we call the premium, which I'll explain that in a bit. Now, the premiums that you pay each month, which is the money out of your pocket that you have to pay for your health insurance, it's also usually a pre-tax deduction from your paycheck. So you get to save on the taxes that you normally would pay on this when you pay for your insurance, all right? So that's a plus to group health insurance and for working for someone. Now, in order to get this perk, you usually have to, one, work for someone. Two, you have to be a full-time employee. So you can't just like work at a job for like five hours a week and say, hey, give me health insurance. No, usually they only do it for their full-time employees. And then finally, um, you can't just start working at a job and then get access to all, of, um, to all that insurance. There's usually a 90-day probationary period that you have to pass, and then they'll offer you these perks, such as health insurance. If you work for yourself, if you're self-employed, then you are going to have to pay for your own health insurance. Right. Or you don't have to. But in, in our state, I believe they require. Actually, I think it's nationwide now that they require. it. So if you're self-employed or you don't work for someone, uh, you're going to have to go through this. Uh, it covers either an individual or a family. There's no discount because it's fully paid by you. And, it, and that's why it's usually more expensive. Um, if you talk to someone who works with someone versus someone who's self-employed, most likely the person who works with someone is going to pay way less than the person that is self-employed. So premiums you pay varies on a few different factors. Um, and then finally, I guess the plus here is you do have the freedom to choose any insurance company, the plan and the options that best fit your needs. So sure, it's more expensive, but you can pick a cheaper one if you can find it and if you really want to go that way. All right. So that's number two. And then finally, number three, and you've heard of it, it's government sponsored. So Medicare, if you ever heard of Medicare, that is for people who are 65 years and older, and it doesn't matter what your income is, but you get access to government sponsored insurance, health insurance, which is called Medicare. And, or if you're on disability, Medicaid, and I've always remembered this because it's like, you're aiding the people who are um, low income, the, most likely it's a state or federal program, and that gives health insurance for people who are who have low income. Okay, and once again, the government will subsidize that for you. All right, so just letting you know, those are the three different types. The two that we're going to discuss right now really fall into one and two. If you work for someone or if you're self-employed. Okay, now before we go on, I'm going to be very clear. Every person, every family has a different healthcare need. That's why it's so hard to teach about insurance because. It's not just one size fits all. No, every person, every family has a different healthcare need. So you can't just go up the cheapest option. You have to go up the best option that best fits your needs. All right. So keep that in mind. So here we go. Take some notes on this as well in the note taker. There's two main popular types of insurance within if you're an employee or if you are self uh, employed. So there's HMO, which is uh, which stands for health maintenance organization. And then there's PPO, which stands for Preferred Provider Organization. So I just memorized it, HMO, PPO, super straightforward. I'm going to show you three differences between these two. And once again, this is all information that I never knew um, up to you know a few years ago because I did the research, but most people don't even know the difference. So here are the three different um, differences. For HMO, you have access to doctors within a network, okay? And I'll explain what that means in a bit. So write that down or type that in. And then for PPO, you have access to doctors outside of your network. So you really have this full on access to many more doctors if you choose the PPO route. The first difference I want you to know that HMO versus PPO, um, HMO are, you only get a select group of doctors. PPO, you get more doctors. So take a look at the bottom there. Network equals a 
um, providers that you're that have agreed to lower their rates but maintain their quality so a lot of the times if you go the hmo route it's cheaper but you get less doctors ppo more expensive but you get more access um, access more flexibility take a look at the bottom more choice and you can really go into any network inside your network or outside your network so there's so many more doctors that you can um go to all right so that's difference number one the second difference is the cost so i kind of pointed at that a little bit earlier the cost is su uh, way less expensive for and for our employee plan and then for ppo it's more expensive now i want to be careful here because the cost really does depend on the employer and the plan available so sure, for my school district, it's way more for BBO, but for some employers, it's not that much different. So that's why you've got to make sure you um, make the best choice for your family. Now, what's less expensive? So I'm gonna touch on this a little bit later, but copay, premium, deductible, and the max out of pocket uh, that you have to pay, all right? So cost is number two. And finally, number three, if you, and, and this one's a huge determining factor for a lot of people. So it all depends on your family. And once again, do you have any pre-existing conditions? Do you have any health needs, et cetera? It's, everyone's in a different scenario. But if you want to see a specialist, let's say I wanted to go see a dermatologist uh, to go look at something on my skin. Well, first I would have to go, if I had HMO, I'd have to go through my PCP, which is my primary care provider, which is my family practice doctor, or they're also called internal medicine doctors. So I'd have to go there first, let them know, hey, I've got this thing on my skin and, and I want to go see a dermatologist. They would then refer me to go to a dermatologist and most likely it'd have to be within their network. You see that? That's HMO. PPO. Oh, something's on my skin and I want to go see a doctor. Okay, so I'm going to go look them up. Here's the best one in my area. I want to go see them. You go straight there. If you want to go see a specialist, you go straight to them. You don't need to go through something called a primary care provider and you don't even have to stay within your network. If there's a great doctor that's not within your network, you can go to them. You can go see them because you have access to them because you're paying more and you're part of the PPO plan. All right. So hopefully that makes sense. And let's keep going. Once again, every person's different. Every family's different. So you got to make the best decision for your healthcare needs. Super practical. Okay. <laughs> and it took me an hour to figure out how to teach this. So let's say you're shown two choices for insurance plans, HMO and PPO. You just got a job somewhere and you are shown two different insurance plans. So what's important to know? Well, first off, like you need to know that every, like, like that whole benefits plan is super long, but the main four things I look at are these four. All right. So take some notes on this as well. And the note taker, if you're using the note taker. All right, here we go. So HMO, PPO. So the monthly premium, anytime you hear the word premium, so we're, type this down. That is what you pay out of pocket every pay period. If you get paid once a month, you're going to pay this once a month. If you, if you get paid twice a month, you're going to break that down. You're going to pay this two times a month. All right. So it all depends. Assuming you're paying per month, uh, an HMO plan can be $230 a month. And then a PPO can, plan can be 574. Do you see the difference there already? And once again, I need to be careful here because every single workplace is different. So yours may be a little bit more. Yours may be I've heard of five times as more for PPO. You should get five times more. So it can be a thousand dollars a month for insurance, right? So families a little more, 450 versus $1,634 per month. The monthly premium is something I look at because it's like, well, how much can you afford? And really, what do you need at this point? If you have pre existing health conditions, if your kids have those, then most likely you're going to want to see doctors fast. And if you want to do that, you're going to pay for the PPO premium. The overall deductible is something that I didn't know about until recently too, but that's what you pay out of pocket before your insurance. Let's say you go um, um, uh, have some surgery done and let's say it costs $3,000. Well, if you're a single person and you're in the PPO plan, then you have to pay out of pocket $1,500 for that care, $1,500. But if you're in the HMO plan, zero. And so some of you are like, well, why wouldn't you just go with the HMO plan? Because once again, it's access to doctors. It's how quick you can get the access, right? So you get what you pay for ultimately, but your, your deductible is how much you have to need to pay out of pocket before your insurance. Let's say it costs $3,000, this surgery, but my deductible here is $1,500 for myself. Then I'll pay the $1,500 and then whatever's above my deductible that year, your insurance company will pay the rest. Let's say I have a $10,000 surgery. $1,500 is my out of pocket. And then my insurance will pay the rest. You see that? Um, I also want to be careful here too, because that's not, I don't know if that example was perfect, but that's kind of how I understand it. 
The, the, uh, the copay is, is pretty similar. Sometimes it's a little bit lower for PPO, but it's about $20, $25. So let's say I go get a health checkup, then I have to pay $25 out of pocket usually. That, that being said, if you get an annual physical or an annual checkup, that's usually free. So this is like, if I just want to go to the doctor just to see the doctor and say, hey, I'm not feeling well, I just want to go see the doctor. Most likely it's a $25 uh, copay that is out of my pocket when I go see them. Now the out of pocket limit, this is actually something that you should look at as well. This is the most money that you'll spend in a calendar year until the uh, insurance pays the rest. This is a little bit different than the deductible because at the end of the day, this is the max money that they can take from you, right? So for HMO versus PPO, take a look. Single versus family, it's different, but you can see $2,000 versus $3,500. So there's a difference there between the out of pocket. Those are the four things I would look at right when you get an employer sponsored plan or a, or a self-employed plan. Whenever you look at your insurance, of course, there's like 20 things on the list, but these are the main four things that I look at. All right. Why is healthcare so expensive? Why? Well, administrative costs are going up, right? So that includes everything, uh, all the non-doctors, right? So if you think about all the people that work in the hospital, like outside of the doctors, that that's a cost. General costs, the building, the lease, the rent for the building, right? And, and the electric, you know, all these different things are a cost as well prescription costs are going up. There's also insurance. So the hospital needs to pay for their insurance because if there's a lawsuit, then they're going to be covered as well. Compensation of employees of doctors, that's going up as well. So that's why healthcare needs to go up as well. All right. So whenever you're paying like, like all this money, it's not all going to the doctor. There's a lot of other costs that are involved as well. So why insurance? Why are we talking about this week? Almost never taught in schools. Everyone will need to purchase it. And it's an easy way to save money when you understand what you're paying for. Please continue with us. Think about it if you have time. Day two, we're going to talk about the basics of car insurance. So please stay tuned for that. And I'm so excited to teach you this week about insurance. Bye-bye.